All right, so I want to give you guys kind of like a quick walk around of the bike while we have some light before the sun sets because it's setting pretty quick. For me, this is the bike that maybe doesn't make the most financial sense to own. Man, chasing sunsets, baby. No one is even touching the Italians when it comes to looks. Now today we're going to be doing a review on my dream bike, which if you've been following the channel, you know it's the SB2. I've had this bike for a year now, so I want to give you guys like a long-term review. We'll talk about the good, the bad, the ugly. And if you've been following the channel, you know this is my second Ducati. The first one, let's just say I did not have the greatest experience. sunset together and talk about Ducatis. Is that not romantic? I mean, come on guys. I'm trying to earn you subscribe. So if you're not subscribed, we're on the road to one mil. Help us get there. Hit that subscribe button. It's free today. Tomorrow, I don't know. Today, guaranteed to be free. Now, the very first thing you notice when you sit on a Ducati is one, how wide your hands are. So the handlebars are wide, which allows you to get better leverage you're doing stuff like track riding, riding, or riding, what? <laughs> track riding or twisty riding. Same thing with the foot position. It's very wide compared to any other bike, especially any other bike that I know. Also, the second thing you're gonna notice as soon as you sit on it is how premium feeling everything feels. Like all the buttons, all the controls, like everything just feels high end. It's kind of like sitting in, a, let's say you sit in like a, I don't know, a Corolla. And then you go sit in a freaking, might be like a Mercedes or a BMW. Just like how the knobs feel, the response, the feedback, all that little stuff is how it feels on the Ducati. Even like the seat feels premium. Like it's a little stickier than your common seat you're going to see on most sport bikes. So you don't slide around as much. Woo! This thing is also very, very, very smooth, man. Like, really smooth. You do not feel the shifts on this bike. Like, downshift, downshift. Like, it didn't set the bike at all. Versus my 1299, my older Ducati was a 2017. Like, when you shifted that bike up or downshift, it was like, uh, uh, like, you felt the bike shift. Same thing with the upshifts, man. It's like, you hit it. This thing is quick. She is quick, quick. Best word to describe this thing is like a scalpel. Like it'll go exactly where you want it to go. As long as you understand how to control and maneuver the bike. Now this is like the worst riding conditions to have a Ducati in because this thing does tend to run hot. And I really think the cylinder deactivation or whatever Ducati did to kind of try and fix it really did actually help. That sunset is gorgeous. Oh, uh, why is it lane splitting legal? Look at this big open lane I have right here, man. I'm so tempted. I'm trying to be good, though. Don't tell me that was causing all the traffic. Really? <laughs> really? I swear traffic be caused by, like, the most random stuff. 
But anyways, I feel like honestly my 1299 ran harder than this and my old R1 where it had the undertail exhaust, that bike ran so hot because the exhaust ran up down by your leg and then the heat would literally come out of the pipes and literally like a little whatever you call this thing like right around your back so if you were accelerating like you could just feel your neck hair just getting hot like it was it, it was an experience for sure holy cow <laughs> yes sir Florida flexion on the nation right now Man, it's a December afternoon, 70 degrees out, feels incredible. It's moments like these that you just gotta remind yourself to live in the moment, man. Holy cow. Sheesh! Woo! Talk to him, Luna. Talk to him, girl. I miss you, girl. I miss you. The big black stallion. <laughs> Pause. <laughs> Pause. I don't want to see no AO in the comments down below. And I'll argue this all day long, but Ducati has the best looking bikes. Like, by far. No one is even touching the Italians when it comes to looks. And I'm referring to both cars and bikes. If you're the type of person that likes getting compliments, you're going to love this machine because you're going to get hella compliments like by far the ducati gets the most compliments out of all the bikes that i own even old ladies or unsuspecting people that look like they've never ridden in a motorcycle or know anything about bikes i've gotten compliments from and i'm like what <laughs> what do you know about motorcycles it just has that look to it man <laughs> look at the ocean baby that is just gorgeous with the sunset all right guys how'd i do is this romantic this is not romantic how you feeling right now we getting lucky tonight or nah i'm gonna slow down so i can really just take this in look well, just listen to that rumble man Woo! Woo! the ducati is such a unique sound and camera does not do a good job of picking up like the bass that this bike has like it just feels like it's got like some big balls to it man when you hear it just the constant rumble it's funny whenever i'm on this bike everyone's like i know exactly where you are <laughs> at all times when i'm in a group ride just because it has such a unique sound to it man but listen to this <laughs> and when you get that pop and you get the flames out of both pipes Oh my gosh, this thing really is just something special, man. <laughs> I know that guy's loving it. I also see a lot of comments asking why I haven't bought a V4R. And before I get into this, I am going to say the V4R is an incredible machine. That is a track weapon right there. It looks good, it sounds good. I mean, it's just, it's built specifically for the track. In my opinion, I'm glad I went with the SP2 because this bike is a lot more rare, at least for me. I have only seen uh, maybe one or two other SB2s since owning this. V4Rs, I can't even count on both my hands and toes how many I've seen. I've seen at least like 20, 30 plus V4Rs. Like you go to any meetup and you're probably going to see a V4R somewhere. And that's because one, they made more, and I'm talking about old generation and new generation. Oh my god, this view, man. And the SPs, they only made it for like a year, two years. So the SP1 and the SP2. Woo! 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 <laughs> yes, sir! Let's go, Luna! Talk to him, girl! Talk to him! <laughs> oh, man, I'm about it. Guys, this is, I can't believe this is where I live. It's still blowing my mind. Now, you are paying a premium price when you buy this bike. And I want to get off and show you guys all the mods and everything that I've done to it and kind of talk about some other things that I still have left to do. For me, this is the bike that maybe doesn't make the most financial sense to own. 
as far as the business. But I, I mean, I, come on, it, it, come on, just look at this thing, man. It has such a menacing look to it. It just looks angry, it sounds angry. I mean, I don't know, it's just, it's just different. I, I always equate riding a Ducati to people as like putting on like a nice suit. Like when you dress nice to go somewhere, you just feel good because you're like, damn, I look good. That's how this bike makes you feel, man. But like I said, that comes at a price. And that's like one of my downsides with this thing, man, is it's expensive. 100% it's expensive. You got to go into this knowing it's going to be an expensive ownership experience. And if you're the type of person that's worried about that, then uh, I, I mean... Uh, it might not be right for you, and, and that's perfectly fine. But if you're the type of person that's not really concerned about that, then I mean, go ahead. Parts are gonna be more expensive. You're gonna have to wait a little bit longer because a lot of stuff has to be shipped over from Italy. Also, they take a random month off during the year where they don't work, which uh, we need to adopt that here in America because I don't know what we're doing. But I think it's like August or September. They don't work for like the entire month, <laughs> which is crazy. <laughs> So like if you need parts during that time like you're just out of luck you're gonna have to wait the entire month to until you get anything i mean even just putting a full exhaust on this bike you're gonna be spending upwards of like five grand for the exhaust and then the labor because it takes like over 12 hours to install an exhaust on this thing now i do want to get off somewhere and show you guys and finish talking real quick Woo. now i do love oh man this is wow <laughs> Golden hour, baby! No, I do love... Damn. I, I can't even talk right now. I'm just trying to soak this all in. I've never ridden on this bridge. Sheesh! I wanted to do a wheelie, but... I can't keep it in. YouTube will have make me cut it out, so... There's not even a point. And this bridge is so bouncy. This would be awful to do with him. I don't know if y'all can see that on the camera. Man, chasing sunsets, baby. <laughs> but I do want to do like a comparison of this bike and the Beamer. Because I feel like they're very, very close. As far as speed, I don't know which one's faster, honestly. Like it's that close. Part of me thinks the Duck might have it a little bit, but I don't know. I'd have to ride them on the same day back to back to really be able to tell and even then who knows and i was gonna say even the h2 it might be a close comparison but i know once i do all the stage two mods that i'm gonna do to that bike it, it won't even be a comparison at all dang i really wanted to get the drone up too i'm having a little bit of ptsd right now because this is the spot where we got harassed <laughs> that's what i'm calling i'm not even calling it pulled over just calling it harassed by the police we got surrounded by troopers and sheriffs for tags and we weren't even speeding right? they couldn't get us for speeding because we weren't speeding oh heck yeah we got a zx10 out here baby zx10 some of the other boys out everyone's out today man this is awesome and I'm all for the Japanese bikes, man, but I'm telling you, there's just something about these European ones. The Duck and the Beamer, it just hits different. Woo! I'm going to get you guys off the bike so we can really look at this thing in detail before the sun goes away. All right, so I want to give you guys kind of like a quick walk around of the bike while we have some light before the sun sets because it's setting pretty quick. But uh, mods that we have done, Y'all know the SP comes with the carbon wheels, which that makes such a huge difference. This bike feels so nimble. When I get on another bike that doesn't have carbon wheels, which my R1M doesn't, and my H2 doesn't, my M1000 RR does, I feel the immediate difference. The bike feels way, a little bit more sluggish and way more heavy. These, oh my God, worth every penny. I've got the slip-on aero exhaust. You see some bluing there, it is titanium. Um, I love this. This bike is really loud, which I like loud exhaust on my bike. I don't know about you guys. Extremely loud, and it shoots flames out, out both sides of the pipes. As y'all know, the Ducatis have two pipes. So it's got a pipe down there. It's got a pipe up here. And like I said, when it shoots flames out the back on both, it looks incredible. I've also upgraded the chain of sprocket, so I finally got these nuts on here. Um, so we got red, 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 and then black and gold. Try to keep with the theme. 
black, gold, red, you know what I'm saying? Y'all see me? And then we've also got forged carbon everywhere. Forged carbon up here. This piece is forged carbon, you can't really tell. There you go. You can tell a little bit. SP2, these are numbered too. This is number 494. I haven't seen anything above 1500, so part of me thinks they made 1500 of these. I've got carbon around here. You can't really see because it's dark, but carbon wings, carbon front friend. Wow, I can't talk. Carbon front fender. We got carbon clutch cover, carbon frame covers, subframe, exhaust, uh, heel guards. We got the swing arm cover in carbon as well. I've got this piece in carbon. I just need to install it. I couldn't get the screw off and I had to put the bike back together at the time. If anyone knows where I can get this piece, right here and here in carbon so it doesn't have this magnesium I'm pretty sure that's what this is the magnesium stuff I just want to get covers if I can get them in forged carbon that would be perfect um, but yeah besides all the cosmetic stuff and the simple things that everyone has like uh, the uh, tail tidy kit um, it's got a slip on exhaust and then the tune that's really it and man that's really all this bike needs honestly like it's already got great brakes on there it's got the Brembo's as you can see right there got the Olin's suspension that adjusts. You can do comfort, you can do race mode, you can do all that good stuff. I had my tech and we're at the track day playing with it and it really makes a huge difference. He was adjusting all the settings as I was kind of telling him feedback as we did uh, laps on the track. And yeah, I got the Rizoma foot peg, which I like the silver because it matches the tank, which matches back here. Um, they just kind of plays off the silver on the other parts of the bike. This bike, like I said, it's just, Absolutely beautiful, man. I love this thing, bro. But all right, we're losing sunlight, so I'm gonna hop back on and we'll finish out this video. <laughs> okay, yeah, this bike, honestly, like, this bike wheelie is the easiest out of all my bikes. The power to weight ratio of this bike is just... <laughs> Unmatched, man. Holy cow. This thing's so much freaking fun. Oh, man. This bike does that the easiest out of all my bikes, man. I just ride on up. That's not even full throttle. I guess the last two things I'll kind of address to close out this video, I'm sure it's getting a little long, is one, is it really worth the $40,000? And two, the things that I dislike about it. Now, do I think this thing is worth the full... Let me make sure I'm recording here. All right, cool. Now, do I think this thing is worth the full $40,000? Uh, I mean, it just depends, honestly. Like, if you're just buying a bike to cruise around on, like, the weekends, do you necessarily need something like this? No. But if you are going to get or feel like you get value out of a community, which is what Ducati's essentially built around this brand, which is crazy. The following that it has, like to my knowledge, this is the only brand that has like standalone dealerships. Like you can go to, I've been to Ducati New York. I've been to Ducati, uh, I went to Greece when I was in Athens, Greece. Ducati Las Vegas. I made videos at all these places. Uh, Ducati Austin in Texas. I'm lying, it's a Ducati Dallas. It just feels like you have like an instant connection with people that ride and own Ducatis, man. Like, y'all just understand that these are race bikes that you're enjoying on the street. And when I did a track day with this bike, I really understood that. Cause I went from riding my R1M all morning, hopped on this, and it just felt like the icing on the cake. Like my lap times on the first lap immediately shaved off a few seconds. Like it was actually kind of mind-boggling. The people you meet are incredible. You're gonna meet some stuck-up Ducati riders and that's just, I mean, there's always bad eggs in any sort of batch. But if you stick with the positives, man, I mean, in my opinion, I love this brand. The styling, the feeling you get when you're on it. If you're the type of person that just likes nice things, then this Ducati's 100% for you, man. Now the main things that I hate, hate is a strong word, but dislike about this bike, is one, gonna be the maintenance. And it's not even, I guess, I have a higher end model, like this bike has the dry clutch. If you get, like just a V4S or a base V4, you're not gonna have this issue. 
but this bike literally has 2400 miles on it and the dry clutch completely went out and as y'all can imagine that's not a cheap fix it was going to cost me about three thousand dollars to get this bike fixed <laughs> and to have a three thousand dollar bill on a brand new bike that has 2400 miles on it is a little wild but it's just kind of it, it just comes with owning something like this like an exotic car it's like having a lamborghini like oil changes regular maintenance things are going to be expensive and it's just part of the ownership thing so as long as you're okay with that then you're good now one nice thing is that they did warranty it my area manager took care of me and that's another cool part about having a smaller brand or a brand that feels more like a community is that you have friends that can help you out sometimes so he helped me out but in another 2500 miles when this clutch goes again <laughs> i'm gonna be forking over three thousand dollars which kind of leads me to not want to ride this bike as much or only ride it to exotic events or on just special occasions which kind of makes me feel like the typical ducati rider <laughs> and i always said i never wanted to be yeah, as long as you're good with the maintenance the cost of maintenance and the cost of parts sourcing parts is going to be a little bit harder as long as you go into owning this bike and understand that and you're okay with that then i'd say 100 percent go for it man 100 percent like i said i love this bike to death my wallet doesn't but i definitely do it's a special unique experience that no other bike's going to give you man but all right i'm gonna fight through this traffic to get home <laughs> i gotta get over here if y'all enjoyed that video make sure that like button hit that subscribe button join the fast play gang bang bang <laughs> oh man luna your boy pray for me man i gotta deal with this we got a long hour ride back home <laughs> <laughs> Alright, we'll catch y'all the next one, man. We out. Thanks.